particularly for the need of this introduction and under the grace of the Lord Jesus. Your love and thanks and praise to all those that the Lord has used over the years. Your love and thanks and praise to God for giving them the generosity of heart to work in all these years. We ask the Lord to reward them abundantly for their gifts of love to Christ our Lord. Amen. Now confess our sins to God and to one another. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have great sin in my thoughts and my words. What I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, as a blessed Mary and a virgin, May Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
standing for the procession of the word of God. In Psalm 119 verses 105, the word of the Lord is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. My dear friends in Christ, we we'll welcome the word of God into this church with a native song, which means honor the word of God, praise the word of God. Please let us welcome our liturgical dancers and the sisters with the procession of the word of God. friends in Christ, it is now time for the liturgy of the world. The first reading from the book of the prophets, chapter 11, verses 1 to 4, will be taken by Mr. Pius Eworo. The second reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verses 1 to 6, verses 14, verses 22 to 23, 32 to 33, shall be taken by Mrs. Franca Ikediashi. Then the gospel from the Holy Gospel according to John chapter 14 verses 15 to 17 will be proclaimed by Reverend Father Onya Emmanuel. On that day, there shall come forth 
a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, and the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see, or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor, and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. The word of the Lord. Lord, send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send send forth forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send forth your Spirit, let me the face of the earth. 
Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly a sound came from heaven like the rush of a mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared on them tongues as of fire, distributed and resting on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, they were dwelling in Jews, in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together and they were bewildered because each one heard them speaking in his own language. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs which God did through him in your midst. As you yourselves know, this Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we are all witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this which you see and hear. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you a counselor to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. The Gospel of the Lord. blesses us with it and we expect it to make the sign of the cross. Dear friends in Christ, it is now time for the presentation of the candidates. I now invite the parish priest, the Right Reverend Monsignor John Kanebi Anyago, to present the candidates for confirmation to the Archbishop. Your Grace, Most Reverend Alfred Adewale Martins, St. Leo's Catholic Church, Ikeja wishes to present to you the young men and women who have been prepared and are ready to receive the fullness of Christian initiation in the sacrament of confirmation. Each candidate has been well instructed and accompanied by his or her sponsor it is my privilege to present them to you at this time. I invite the candidates for the sacrament of confirmation to please stand. We give thanks to God for each and every one of you that it has pleased him that you be conferred with the sacrament of confirmation today. We pray that the Spirit of the Lord will fall afresh on each and one of you. We pray that as the Spirit falls afresh on you, he will renew you. And as you are renewed, may you be instruments in the hands of God for renewing the face of the earth. So I prayer for you through Christ our Lord. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, it is now time for homily, I enjoin each and every one of us to remain calm and attentive while I invite the Archbishop, the Most Reverend Dr. Alfred Adewale Martins, for the homily. Glory to Jesus. Glory, glory, glory to Jesus. May God's name be praised now and forevermore. Amen. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, I greet you all in the most holy name of Jesus. Jesus, by whose coming into the world, Years are counted. 
Everything is either before or after Jesus. Jesus, the Lord of time, the master of the Sabbath, the Alpha and the Omega. All times, all seasons belong to him. May the holy name of Jesus be praised now and forevermore. Amen. I greet particularly the priests and parishioners of St. Leo Parish. I greet you in the name of Jesus, but I also greet you in the name of the entire faithful of the Archdiocese of Lagos, beginning with our Emeritus Archbishop, Anthony Cardinal Okoje, the entire clergy, the religious, and the laity of the Archdiocese. We greet you as we join you in thanksgiving to God for the 50 years, the golden jubilee of your parish. Our prayer is that priests and people may continue to grow together in the love of God and in the love of one another unto eternal life through Christ our Lord. On a day like this, we cannot but remember and pay tribute to those who have allowed themselves to be used as instruments in the hands of God for bringing the parish of St. Leo into existence, and all those who have allowed themselves to be used for making her the fruitful mother church that she is. At the risk of leaving out the names of many others, I'd like to pay tribute to the memory of my predecessor in office, Archbishop Leo Hill Taylor, in whose honor I understand the church was named St. Leo. Pay tribute to the late very Reverend Father Dennis Joseph Slattery, the small but mighty SMA priest who did all the work that was involved with purchasing the land on which the church stands today. We pay tribute to the SMA priests who have worked, who worked over the years from the nascent years of the parish. We give tribute to the Vincentian priests who also worked in this parish. And of course, with loud acclamation, we greet those Archdiocesan priests who have also labored over the years in bringing the parish to where she is now. Priests in residence, associate priests, and parish priests. Of course, outstanding among them is the Right Reverend Monsignor John Aniago, who for over two decades has seen the parish give birth to other session churches that have themselves become parishes. We give thanks to God and pay tribute to him and the parishioners for developing the physical infrastructures that we found on these grounds. The completion of the church building itself, along with the, the acoustic problems that it had long for a long time, I believe it is solved now, you can hear me. So the building of the priest's house, the clinic, the grottos, the bell towers, and so on and so forth. We pay tribute to your resilience and to commitment and readiness to work for the growth of this parish. Remarkably, we rejoice with the lay faithful of the parish 
the leaders of the lay faithful over the years. For over those years, they have been committed to the growth of the parish, making the finances available, being faithful to the teachings of the church, and in constant cooperation with their priests. I salute you all, and I give thanks to God for you, for your priests, for the religious who have played significant roles in the life of the parish. As we give thanks to God today, for the people, for the structures, and for all who have worked. We cannot, but, we cannot forget the catechetical initiative of Monsignor John Aniagu and the warm reception and readiness to learn of the people, the faithful of the parish. I believe that the Lord has used that to build up the faith and commitment to the church of the peoples of this parish. May God's name be praised now and forevermore. And we pray that the parish will continue to grow from strength to strength through Christ our Lord. My prayer is that hope will never be dim in this parish. May love continue to flourish in this parish. And may faith continue to grow and spread through Christ our Lord. Now that you are 50, now that you are 50 as a parish, you must not forget the mission of the church, the mission that Christ entrusted to her. Before he ascended to heaven, the last words of Jesus, his pattern instructions were, go, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20. These, I charge you as a parish, must be constantly reflected in the mission statement that you craft for yourselves. It has been said that the church exists by mission in the same way as fire exists by burning. The church exists by mission in the same way as fire exists by burning. Indeed, the only reason why the church exists is to evangelize. If the parish builds a clinic, if the parish buys a piece of land and establishes new outstations, if the church builds a school, if she takes care of the poor, if the church opens a home for the elderly or the orphans, even if she builds a retirement home for priests, everything is done for the purpose of evangelization, for the mission of the church, the mission of evangelization and teaching the whole world to obey all that Christ has taught. Where there is no mission, there is no church. And where there is no church, there is no faith. Faith, the church, and mission go together and must be at the forefront of all that you do. I ask you, priests and people of St. Leo, to never flag in the effort to create new initiatives for evangelization. Let every single parishioner of this parish, indeed every follower of Christ, recognize that their mission is to be disciples and to make disciples. Please note, our mission is to be disciples and to make disciples. Each of us must seek to be disciples. The ones who are committed to following Jesus, the ones who take time to listen to Jesus attentively, like Mary, the sister of Martha and Lazarus. Disciples are you who allow the word of Jesus to transform you, so that the word and the message of Jesus guides your daily life 
your daily decisions, your daily actions. When you have become disciples, in the true sense of the word, you become duly motivated and committed to make disciples of other people. My dear friends, know that Jesus depends on you in order to make the word to be spread and to make the faith to flourish. It is said again, and I repeat again, where there is no mission, there is no church. And where there is no church, there is no faith. The existence of the faith in any place depends upon the existence of the church. The existence of the church depends upon the people who are motivated and committed to the mission of evangelization. Christ depends on you. The church depends upon you to be faithful. Do not disappoint Christ. Do not disappoint the church. But as you strive not to disappoint the church and disappoint Christ, remember that it is a privilege for us to be called to evangelize. Because as we know, it is not difficult for God to raise up countless others and perhaps even raise up stones if human beings refuse. It is not difficult for him to make his word spread to the ends of the earth. Let us therefore use our privilege to make particular commitment as individuals to bring in the message of Christ to the world as a gift to God for your 50 years of existence. As we celebrate Golden Jubilee of this parish, we also celebrate the coming of age of some of the children of this parish. Today, we have nearly 200 of our brothers and sisters who will be conferred with the sacrament of confirmation. We thank God for you who are being confirmed. I think we can call you Golden Jubilee Confirmandee. Congratulations. We congratulate you individually because by the grace of God, through the imposition of hands and anointing with the oil of chrism, each of you become adults in the faith and soldiers of Christ. Adults in the faith and soldiers of Christ. Today, by the grace of God, each of you receives the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And know that the gifts of the Holy Spirit that you receive are the, exactly the same gifts that were given to the 12 apostles on the day of Pentecost. It is the same Holy Spirit that was given to each and every one of those who we venerate as saints today. Those who have walked in this world and by their cooperation with the Holy Spirit have lived worthy lives, holy lives, and today are with God in heaven. The same Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, the one that Jesus promised would lead the apostles to the complete truth will be given to you today. That is not a small thing. That is a big thing to happen to you today. And so we congratulate you on this important day in your lives. The Holy Spirit always makes a world of difference to the lives of people upon whom he comes. You are receiving the Holy Spirit not simply because you passed some exam, not simply because you have gone through some classes for a number of years, not because of your age, some are 15, perhaps some are 50, some are 17, maybe there are some who are 70 among you. It is not by age, it is by grace. Grace, the free gift of God. And that is why I urge you, dear brothers, dear sisters, to 
Take advantage of the grace that God is giving you. When Daniel was going to save Susanna in the book of Daniel, it was not because of his age that he was able to do it, but by the coming down upon the, of the Holy Spirit upon him. And he was able to see the truth. The Spirit leading him to the truth made him to see the truth. And Susanna was saved. The apostles who were afraid became courageous because the Holy Spirit came down upon them. The Holy Spirit wants to make the same difference in your life. Take advantage of that grace. As you receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit today, please try to bear the fruits of the Holy Spirit. I'm sure you know how many gifts of the Holy Spirit there are. How many gifts of the Holy Spirit are there? How many? Seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. What about the fruits of the Holy Spirit? Twelve fruits of the Holy Spirit. I think our catechists have done a good job. Please clap for them. You will receive the seven gifts free of charge. You are to bear the fruits by your own efforts. Receive the gifts. The gifts will help you to bear the fruits. You will make the efforts to bear the fruits. And therefore, I ask you, from day to day, take some time to examine yourselves and see whether you are truly bearing the fruits of the Holy Spirit in your day-to-day -day life. Those who see you receive confirmation today want to see a difference that the Holy Spirit has made to your life. Those of your classmates who will hear that you have received the Holy Spirit wants to see what difference it has made to your lives. Those of your colleagues at work who hear that you have received the Holy Spirit today want to see the difference the Holy Spirit has made. That is why you must bear the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, and the rest. I invite you actually to read the passage of scripture from Paul's letter to the Galatians, chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. And you will be able to see what fruits God expects you to bear. You may not know what magnanimity means, but certainly you will know what it means when you read that portion of scripture, Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23, please find time to read. And I believe that as you, as you leave the fruits of the Holy Spirit, your mission of evangelization will become fruitful because you will be a hundred more soldiers that Christ is sending into the mission of evangelization. May God in his goodness Grant you the grace to be faithful today and always through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the moment of silence and brief prayer, we will now meditate on the words that you have just heard. May the words we have heard heal abundant and transformative fruits in our lives through Christ our Lord. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, it is now time for the renewal of baptismal promises. Let the candidates who are prepared themselves to receive this worthy sacrament and are ready to be strengthened by the grace of the Holy Spirit, please rise for the renewal of their baptismal promises. And since today is Sunday, the renewal of baptismal promises takes the place of the creed. We all are also invited to rise as we renew our baptismal promises. Dear brothers, dear sisters, before you receive the Spirit, I ask you to renew the profession of faith that you made in baptism or your parents and godparents made in union with the whole church. 
Do you reject Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who came upon the apostles at Pentecost and today is given to you sacramentally in confirmation? Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. May we please be seated. It is now time for the laying on of hands. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, it is important to reiterate that all sacraments and liturgy of the Catholic Church includes the laying on of hands, which signifies the invocation of the Holy Spirit, blessing and commissioning. And so, the conferral of hand by our Archbishop on the Catechumens at this Mass expresses the invocation of the Holy Spirit, the blessing and the commissioning of them all for the great work of evangelization. Dear friends, the presence of the Holy Spirit on the confirmandi today and going forward will bring about transformative effect in their lives. We foster spiritual and physical maturing and make them ardent soldiers and zealous missionaries of Christ. And I invite the candidates for confirmation should please kneel, while other members of this assembly should please rise, as the Archbishop leads us in the prayer of the laying on of hands. The candidates for confirmation should please kneel, while other members of the church should please rise. My dear friends, in baptism, God our Father gave the new birth of eternal life to his chosen sons and daughters. Let us pray to our Father that he will pour out the Holy Spirit to strengthen his sons and daughters with his gifts and anoint them to be more like Christ, the Son of God. All-powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by water and the Holy Spirit, you freed your sons and daughters from sin and give them new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon them to be their helper and guide. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill them, Lord, with a spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May we please be seated. My dear friends in Christ, it is now time for the anointing with chrism. Now the Archbishop will anoint the candidates on their foreheads with the oil of chrism as a valid matter for the sacrament of confirmation, imprinting the indelible mark of Christ's sacrifice on their souls. The oil of chrism is a mixture of oil of olives and brassum consecrated by the Archbishop in a special manner and used in administration of certain sacraments like baptism, holy order, confirmation, and other certain ecclesiastical functions. And particular to our celebration, by anointing the foreheads of the candidates with the oil of chrism in the form of a cross, it's meant that the candidate who is confirmed must openly profess and practice his or her faith wordly and fervently, and is called by Christ to follow him, to live out the gospel values and messages wholeheartedly, not only through words, but through action. And I enjoin the candidates and their sponsors to proceed to the threshold of the sanctuary as the Archbishop administers the oil of chrism on the foreheads of the candidate. When the Archbishop says, Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, we are to say, Amen. And when he says, Peace be with you, we are to say, and with your spirit. Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you.
the Archbishop will anoint you, but the Archbishop will be assisted by the Episcopal Vicar of this region and your parish priests. Whoever anoints you, the Dean will also take part. Whoever anoints you, whether it's the Bishop or the Dean or the Episcopal Vicar, Christ anoints you. And therefore, you'll be truly anointed and the Spirit of the Lord will fall afresh on you. May you be truly renewed through Christ our Lord.
rejoice with them today because they have attained another feat in their sacramental life. They bless the Lord in their lives because from today going forward, they are no longer children of the faith, but adults in the faith and also soldiers of Jesus Christ. We glorify the Lord with them and for them for making them docile to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit who will transform them from today going forward, who will be their guide, who will teach them and lead them to that ultimate truth. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, once again, let us please put our hands together for our catechumen. May we now rise for the prayer of the faithful. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, let us humbly pray to God the Almighty Father to sustain with His grace those He has just filled with His gifts of the Holy Spirit and for our other needs. Until the coming of the Lord. We pray, the Lord. Pray for his blessings on all our parishioners 
as we continue on our pilgrimage of faith. We pray, O oh Lord. According to his will, we pray, O oh Lord. of earth. Power and might are in your hands and no one can withstand you. We present our country, Nigeria, before you. We praise and thank you for you are the source of all we have and are. We are sorry for all the sins we have committed and for the good deeds we have failed to do. In your loving forgiveness, keep us safe from the punishments we deserve. Lord, we are weighed down, not only by uncertainties, but also by moral, economic, and political problems. Listen to the cries of your people who confidently turn to you. God of infinite goodness, our strength in adversity, our health in weakness, our comfort in sorrow, be merciful to us, your people, Spare this nation, Nigeria, from chaos, anarchy, and doom. Bless us with your kingdom of justice, love, and peace. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray in silence for our private intentions. We ask Mary, our mother, to intercede for us as we say, Hail Mary. God, our Father, you send your Holy Spirit to guide us on our earthly journey. Listen favorably to our prayer and grant that your divine grace, which was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, may now spread through the hearts of those who believe. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Very please, seated. It is now time for offer tree to stand the other street into the instruction.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice as your hands, for the praise and glory of His name, for the good and the good of all His holy church. Amen. Amen. Receive in your mercy, O Lord, the prayers of your servants, and grant that, being conformed more perfectly to your Son, they may grow steadily in bearing witness to him as a share in the memorial of his redemption, by which he gained for us your Holy Spirit. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, ascending above all the heavens and sitting at your right hand, he poured out the promised Holy Spirit on your adopted children. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the hosts of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts crying out as we are clear. created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, 
a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which would be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Leo the Great, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Alfred Adewale Martins, our Archbishop, the other of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people your son has gained for you. Remember also, Lord, your servants reborn in baptism, whom you have been pleased to confirm by bestowing the Holy Spirit, and in your mercy keep safe in them your grace. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, all who were pleasing to you as they are passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow 
on the wall all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her Peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share with each other a sign of the peace of Christ. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. I'm not worthy that I should enter under my roof. I only say the word and my soul shall It is time for Holy Communion. 
The grace of this Mass is for everyone present, but Holy Communion is reserved for baptized and practicing Catholics who have prepared themselves spiritually to receive the Lord. We acknowledge the presence of our brothers and sisters of other denominations, ecclesial communions and faith who have come to worship with us and participate in our liturgy. We request that you kindly remain on your seats and pray with us as you sing with the choir. Let us keep up our prayers for the unity of all Christians as we ask the Lord to come to you spiritually. May God bless us all. Amen. Sacrament most holy. All praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy. All praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy. O sacrament divine. 
all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. May we please rise for the post communion prayer. Let us pray. Accompany with your blessing from this day forward, O Lord, those who have been anointed with the Holy Spirit and nourished by the sacrament of your Son, so that with all trials overcome, they may gladden your church by their holiness and through their works and their charity foster her growth in the world. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer. Prayer for vocations. O oh God, who will not the death of sinners, but rather that be converted and live, grant to beseech thee through the intercession of the blessed Red Saint Joseph as spouse, the blessed apostles Peter and Paul, and all the saints an increase of vocations to the priestly and religious lives here in our parish, in the Archdiocese of Lagos, in Nigeria, and the world at large, so that your church may have laborers sufficient in number and quality to work with your Son, Jesus Christ, for the salvation of their fellow men and women. We make this prayer through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Prayer for the 2023 Synod. We stand before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather together in your name, with you alone to guide us. Make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way we must go, and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote this other. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path, nor partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All this we ask of you who are at work in every place and time, in the communion of the Father and the Son, forever and ever. St. Leo's Golden Jubilee Prayer. Almighty God, we come as a family to thank you for making it possible that we celebrate the Golden Jubilee of our parish, St. Leo's Ikeja. Over the years, we have experienced your mercy, grace, blessings, and tremendous growth as individuals and as a parish, which has enabled the establishment of other parishes, stations, and mass centers. May our parish experience transformation, revival, and commitment to service as we celebrate this golden jubilee strengthen the weak, lift up the fallen, and keep the clergy and faithful focused on the church's mission. Grant us jubilee blessings of mercy, peace, protection, prosperity, and above all, fraternal charity. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Our Lady, help of Christians, St. Leo's the Great, Parish Anthem.
glory, glory, glory be to Jesus. And honor, honor, honor to Mary. My dear friends in Christ, I want to enjoin each and every one of us to remain calm and attentive. Those who are standing, please look for a place and seat as I invite our Chief Shepherd, His Grace, the Most Reverend Dr. Alfred Adewali Martins for his remarks. Monsignor, the parish priests, other priests here present, major superiors, dear sisters, brothers and sisters. I mentioned during my homily I rejoiced in the fact that St. Leo has been a very fruitful mother. She, by the grace of God, has given birth to several quasi-parishes that have become parishes. She has several stations that became quasi-parishes. And of course, some of the quasi-parishes have grown well enough to become parishes. And so, as a gift to the St. Leo Parish, I hereby announce that one of the stations, Blessed Tansy Agribe, becomes a quasi parish. <laughs> Give thanks to God for the growth that we continue to enjoy in the Church of Lagos, but particularly in the Church of St. Leo in Keja. We again appreciate all the work that have constantly been done in order to expand the cost of the parish. We pray that this will be another incentive to work even harder, that the word of God will reach the ends of the earth, and that this parish will be the catalyst for the growth of the church in this area of our archdiocese. So congratulations, Monsignor. Congratulations to you. Congratulations. I think we should give his grace a big round of applause. So, congratulations, Lady Tansi. A challenge to you to work hard uh -huh, as the Quasar Parish going forward. Before we do the Thanksgiving, I would like to welcome our guests. Of course, first of all, our Chief Shepherd himself, His Grace, Most Reverend Dr. Alfred Adewali Martin. Please welcome His Grace. <coughs> His Grace gave us this date several months ago to celebrate this uh, golden jubilee. We thank God that he's able to be with us, to rejoice with us, and also to administer the sacrament of confirmation to these uh, newly confirmed brothers and sisters. Thank you, Your Grace. Congratulations to the newly confirmed. <laughs> Clap for them. <coughs> I wish to welcome all the priests who have been able to come here today. Today is Sunday, so most priests are busy in their parishes, but some of them made arrangements, they made provision to be here. It shows how much they love St. Leo's Parish. Please welcome our priests. <clears throat> Let me single out our dean, 
the Dean of the Kedja Deanery, Very Reverend Monsignor Patrick Obayomi, I can also see the Dean of Aja Deanery, Very Reverend Father Stephen Akishongo. I want to specially recognize one of our patriots who is here today, the Very Reverend Monsignor Christopher Edema Boyo. <laughs> One of our sons, a son of St. Leo's Parish, the second priest to come out of St. Leo's Parish, is also here, very reverend father, Professor Anthony Alaba Akiwale. A number of our past associate priests and priests in residence are also here. We will see them more at the, at the reception. Please let them stand for the recognition. <laughs> Mother Wilfred, Mother Tobias, Mother Pius, a former priest in residence here in our parish. We also have a few other sons of St. Leo, who are priests here. Will you stand let us see you? Now, going to the religious, I want to welcome very uh, warmly Superior General Sisters the heart of Jesus, our sisters here, EAJ sisters. Sister, let them see you, please. Sister Mary Fauter Manapa. I welcome all the other superiors here and sisters who have made our time different congregations, not just the ones in our parish, others have come from other congregations. Sisters, thank you very much for coming. God bless you. Once again, let me single out the ones from this parish. Indeed, the first Reverend Sister of St. Leo's Parish is here. And she is Sister Mary Idowu Akiwale. <laughs> Senior sister of Father Akinwale. <laughs> she is Idowu, mother is Alaba. <laughs> so, sisters, welcome all of you. I want to welcome all our guests. I cannot identify you individually. I know that we have a I can see nice on the, and ladies of St. Mulumba. Please welcome them. I will recognize you more during the uh, reception. I want to welcome very specially a very dear friend of mine, a brother, and a, one of the leading lights of the Fellowship of Christian uh, Ministers of Nigeria. The Reverend Canon Aki Akiredolu Akiredensi. So, all the other visitors here, I thank you sincerely for coming. Please stay with us after the Mass, at the reception. We will be able to honor you and give you uh, a proper welcome. I have seen some of our senior citizens in St. Leo's. We have a special group here known as the 
Parish Elders Forum. All the 65 years and above, they have a forum, an association, and they do a lot of things in the parish. Elders, Elders Forum, stand, let them see you, wherever you are. real elders. We have the oldest elder here. Pakoiki, please stand. 94 years old. Thank you, sir. Okay? So, that's it. So, now, it's Golden Jubilee. And we thought we should honor some special people. First of all, the Golden Jubilarians. As I said earlier, all those whose 50th birthday or 50th wedding anniversary occur this year. So they should get ready now to come for their Thanksgiving. Please start moving to the place, to the back of the church for Thanksgiving. Immediately after them, those who have spent 50 years in St. Leo's Parish. We want the Archbishop to specially bless these people today. Okay, Golden Jubilarians, why are we sing for them? Oh Lord, we are very, very grateful for all you have done. We are very, very grateful. We are saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. Oh, Lord, I am very, very, we are grateful for everything you have done. We are saying thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, we are very, very grateful. For all you have done for me, oh Lord, we are very, very grateful. We are saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. We are grateful, Lord, for everything that you have done. Thank you for all the gifts you have given them. As they celebrate Golden Jubilee, give them many more years. Give them many more years in good health of mind and body. As they live from day to day, may they feel the joy of your presence. Grant fruitfulness to the work of their hands and help them to find joy in you and to be instruments of joy to the entire universe. In all things, may your name be glorified in their lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah. I didn't know you would favor me this way.
thank you particularly for these, your sons and daughters, for giving them the opportunity of being pioneers of this marriage. All that they have done in these 15 years, receive them as a blessing. Bless them abundantly from day to day. As they grow in years, may they constantly feel the joy of your presence. We pray, Father, for their families, that you will keep them safe, keep them secure, keep them completely in the light of your presence. Give them, Lord, the benefit of your presence, so that in all things your name may be glorified in their lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>
Abona, 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 Abona. Say me this a call you way, me this a call you way, me this a call you way, me this a call you way. Your way, 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 Please rise for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessings. May God the Father Almighty bless you. He has made you his adopted sons and daughters, reborn from water and the Holy Spirit. May he keep you worthy of his fatherly love all the days of your life. Amen. May the only begotten Son of God, who promised that the Spirit of truth would abide in his church, bless you and confirm you by his power in the confession of the true faith through the same Christ our Lord. May the Holy Spirit, who kindles the fire of charity in the hearts of disciples, bless you, lead you blameless, and gather as one into the joy of the kingdom of God through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the name of the Lord be blessed. Now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made Amen. heaven and earth. May the blessing, the peace, and the joy of the Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you all today and be with you forevermore. Amen. Four <laughs> parts for the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.
understanding, can we take our own prayers? The dean of the Kenyan was your Obama will do this for us. Thank you so much. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. God our Father, we have come together as a family of God's children. It's a little standing church in Kenya, Lagos. To celebrate the 50th anniversary of our parish, we ask you, as we have celebrated the mass during this social reception, watch over us, bless us, so that at the end of it all, we have cause to praise and glorify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. St. Leo, Amen. in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Catholic Church in Kogazebe, in Badami area. They call themselves our senior, senior sister. Because we are only 50 years old. St. Louis, in Kogazebe, is over 100 years old. But they are our twin parish. They are twin to St. Louis, Cali Church in Kenya. The reason of them, they are being twin to us. We are expected to give a hand of, a hand of fellowship to them from time to time. Today they have reciprocated by coming here to be part of our golden jubilee celebration. And they have brought gifts too. Please give them a round of applause. And incidentally, their parish is at this time happens to be one of our own sons. The Reverend Father Wisdom TK is here, is a son of St. Leo's parish. And he is the parish priest of St. Leo's Catholic in Kogazembe. Give Father Wisdom most a round of applause. So on that note, I just say, well done to you all. Let us have a good time. The memory of today, linger with us for a very, very long time. Through Christ our Lord. Amen, amen. Thank you very much, Monsignor, for that welcome address. We now take the opening remarks of the chairman, Prince Julius Adelusi Adelui. I'll go back there now. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Today is a special day. It's a day for us to congratulate ourselves and to be here together. I thank God Almighty for today. People of St. Louis must know that they are very special. We came from two directions to form Sindhus. And these two directions are very special. Sometimes in uh, 1948, a certain senior sister of OLA, Mary Ann, he said a very fervent prayer as he was looking for land where to put the convent of the OLA and promised that if he got the land he would name it after Mother Mary. In 1948 at the end of the year he was given the land and therefore named that area Mary. And that's where today we still call that part of Lagos in Lerina. And the Catholic Church has therefore contributed very substantially to the geography of this part of the city. Now, there is also a place called Ikeja. Normally when you are naming geographical areas in this part the unit has some many attached to them Shango, Tegu uh, and so on but the Kenya is not like that the Kenya was a name fixed by the colonialists uh, and this is an acronym uh, that says the Kenya Joint administration. The colonialists themselves never called it the Kenya. Uh, and so they had a colonial pair joint administration and they called it a Kenya. Uh, but it's when the Nigerians themselves took over that they started calling it the Kenya as if it has a meaning. Now, in the late 40s, it was 9, 
some Nigerians are watching at the OLA Center where you had St. Agnes. And naturally, they became too many. By 1968, some other parishioners were worshipping at the Kedina using the Southern Police College site. Uh, both of them also found that the places were not good enough and they got together at meetings from 1968 December to get this togetherness so they could have a worship place that was large. They looked around. There was the West African Airways Corporation that gave them land next to Vining on the way to the golf course. But like all Catholic administrators, it wasn't enough for them. And that's why we are saying that people came from Maryland, people came from Antigua, both places are special, the parishioners are therefore special, and St. Leo's is special. Please give a round of applause for St. Leo's. It is also true that we got this land uh, not from some layman, but from a reverend father called Father Dennis Joseph Slattery. Anybody who's old enough will know of him. And we got this um, land. Ah, okay. Somebody here was a student. Uh, so we got this land of about 12 acres and above. You know, okay, thank you. Uh, from him, not him directly, he had actually put it into the Catholic Church. Uh, so, in any case, that land was uh, bought from him. This is the land. Now, um, even when you still bought that land, it was still not formed. Only about 10, 12 people did that kind of decision making. A certain Mr. J. Taxton Idowu gave part of his document for us to be able to find money to pay for that. Now, these are people who were very active here, but who have gone. And it is my prayer that the Lord will continue to take care of their souls wherever they are. May their souls rest in peace. But the real meat of this diocese has to do with what happened on the 24th of September 1972. It happened along Obakran, number one Obakran, and the parish priest, quote unquote, of um, the people attending the Kedja, for the J.M. Morrison, called a meeting of some of us, who were about 26 or so. And that was the day, uh, it was the 39th Sunday of that year. And that was the day when St. Leo's was born. The point I'm making to you is that very many people who got together to form St. Leo's, many of them are no longer around, but a few witnesses are still around. We had an election on that date. Uh, one Dr. Akirini was being the president, and I was being the secretary. And um, that's 1972. Uh, fast forward, we came here uh, on this uh, particular grounds, and sometimes in 1974, we wanted to build a church out there, and the, the foundation was laid just there, where you have the parish uh, center now. But the interesting thing I want the people to know, those of you who know a bit about St. Louis, is that um, it took about nine months to build that place, and members of the church themselves, people like uh, uh, Pa um, Asheruga, were very involved in uh, actually carrying blocks to participate in the joint venture. But the more interesting one was the one on 1984, 
when we try to lay the foundation of this church as you see it now, we had called a lot of people and um, the Archbishop, now Cardinal, was our guest of honor. One of the drop from that is that you look at these almond trees. Now, there are three of them. What we have done on that occasion was to bring more than one evening so that the Archbishop we choose to tell us was looking healthier. Now, and I think the Archbishop was right, because when you look at that one in the center, it has a robust stem. Oh, but well, we have two siblings in our arm, in our hands. So, privately we said to ourselves in the executive, why don't you just plant them anyway? That's the story of the having one, two, three of these almond trees. But the official one to be uh, recognized is the big fat one. And I hope something will be done to make it. Now I'm telling you all this because it's the 50th anniversary. Now uh, you should know some of the origins of how the church came together. I think really we have been very, very fortunate as far as this church is concerned. Uh, the early days were very difficult. We had priests, assistant priests in succession. And this rapid succession went on for about 23 years until we had somebody called Father John Kennedy and Sukwa Aniago. And he has been with us for 27 years or so. He's still going strong. I noticed that in the bulletin, the, pro the program we had, he was listed as number 10 parish priest. Actually, it was number 8 because two of the former ones were acting the parish priest. I would like to congratulate you uh, for doing what you've done. Uh, I would like to also uh, uh, thank the bishop for what they have done by way of support. Uh, but I would like to congratulate all of us who are just parishioners in this place. Uh, we have the parishioners at the church. Uh, and the parishioners have done quite a bit. Uh, I will zero in on to the committee that was set up by our parish priest. Uh, and the parish priest took them very carefully. I want to appreciate them from the chairperson of the committee all the way down for all the wonderful job they have done to make this program continue. Uh, I shouldn't worry about the rain. Rain is always a blessing. Showers of blessing. And it is significant that this rain came at this time. I also now want to say, ladies and gentlemen, that it's a day of joy. Psalm 17 keeps telling us, I tell you, rejoice. If you look at verse 22. And rejoice we must. Only two days ago, I got a, a WhatsApp message from a Bishop Kuka, who turned 70. And actually, what he sent to me was not words, but pictures of him Bugai. So, I think we should Bugai it here. I know that some people who don't know to Finally, whatever is good needs to be sustained. Only God can sustain. My prayer, especially for the clergy and the lady, is that God Almighty in his mercifulness will keep us, will bless us, will favor us, will protect us, and prosper us. Now for the rest of our lives. Salios! Thank you.
Jubilee deserves to be celebrated. Silver, golden, diamond. So, 50 years is a lot of years. For a parish that have endured for 50 years, it's a big achievement. And uh, we, we began by giving thanks and glory to God who made it possible. It's not by our own doing, but God made it. So we began with the Mass, giving thanks to God, and now we are celebrating, enjoying ourselves. I mean, in the, in the 50 years that we are talking about, St. Leo's Parish has uh, given birth to no less than six other parishes. So we are hoping that we can do much more in the future. We are not going to rest on our oars. We hope to build on the already established foundations. I will tell the Christians not to despair, to have hope that with God everything is possible. With God on our side, we will overcome the many difficulties and setbacks that we are facing right now. The message of hope, we should not despair.
Catholic Church here in Nikeja uh, was officially created on the 24th of September 1972 at a meeting which we held at number one Oba Akran Avenue here in Nikeja. And it brought together worshippers from Maryland and from Ikeja. And then, <laughs> it has grown to become a parish and it has better other parishes. Well, I wanted to make it short. Uh, but then, so after the creation, we settled here. We built our first church in 1974. And before you know it, uh, the population became difficult to accommodate. So we had um, outstations uh, all around the Kenya, and many of these outstations now have become parishes of their own. Uh, this church you see here, the foundation was laid in 1984 at a ceremony that was uh, chaired by, as it was known then, Archbishop Anthony Okoje who is now a cardinal. And the church, as you can see, it, is as big as uh, any pro-cathedral. And we who are members of uh, the church here are very proud to be associated with it. I believe that any person who, like me, has been here for 50 years would marvel at the mercy of God. Several people who were at that beginning have gone and may their souls rest in peace. But those of us who have survived till now uh, feel a sense of achievement uh, and we thank God Almighty and we ask uh, all the visitors here to magnify the Lord the Lord uh, because He has very kind. Well, first of all, there are many people who call themselves Christians, who are Christians in name only. They say some of these prayers without concentrating on the meaning of the prayers that they are reading. Uh, my message to many people who are Christians in this very troubled world is to be more spiritually deep and to be full of hope that our God is a God of hope. It may be very bad now, but through Christian prayer, added to other earthly efforts, the world would change for the better. And indeed, Nigeria itself is about to start changing. When we heard that in about two months' time or thereabouts, we would be celebrating 50 years of existence of St. Leo's Parish, we thought, ah, that's the daunting task ahead of us. How would we do it? What would we do? How would we celebrate it? Where would we have the funds to do it? Today, we have rounded off a week and a half of celebrations and thanks be to God it has been successful can we give ourselves a round of applause now I said can we give ourselves a round of applause because we tried our best however we know that when uh, you saw a plant if God doesn't make it grow, it will not grow. If you place all your efforts in an event 
If God is not behind you, it will not be successful. Today has been a successful day. We give great thanks, honor, and glory to God. Let us applaud God with Let us thank God with a warm round of applause if you have been judged today and that you know that it is He who has made it possible. Thank God. Our greatest thanks go to God Almighty for the existence of this parish for 50 years, for the existence of those several ones who are still alive who started the parish. For those of us who have joined along the way and what it has pleased him to make us contribute to the parish to bring it to the level it is. We thank God for all the parish priests, the associate parish priests, the priests in residence, and those who have helped us in different ways to make this parish what it is. The success that God has made it to be. We thank all the several ladies and gentlemen of this parish who agreed to be members of the parish planning committee, the Jubilee Planning Committee. They worked their backsides off. I can tell you that morning and night calls, uh, SMSs, meetings, physical and uh, Zoom. They were doing all of that. They gave their time, they gave their talents at least, and they gave their treasures. Never, you know, the amount of money we spent on uh, on Zoom, uh, not as much, you know. But they were not reticent in helping out. We thank every member of every subcommittee of the planning committee for what they did, for all they've done. Can I have a round of applause for them all, please? Now we had our parish priest overseeing everything. We had the, assist the associate parish priest. We had the priest in residence who were really, really ingrained members of St. Leo's Catholic Church, Catholic Parish, and they gave their all. The parish reverend sisters also helped out in the different ways. We thank God immensely for their lives, for their being part of the parish. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we thank God thank all the reverend fathers and reverend sisters. Ah, please thank them. And then, of course, our parishioners. What if they called a war and nobody came? Suppose we brought all this food and drinks and everything, and you guys said, uh, so I not get and remember the parable of the king and the wedding feast. He has some just meals and drinks, but the ones he has invited said, I don't get time, Joe. I get better things to do. The two guys didn't think this was something you didn't want to attend. You didn't think there was anything better for you to do. You came and your presence has made this a very, very, very successful event. Let's give thanks to one another for being part of this. Thank you very much. Thank you, God, for everything. And uh, particularly those of you who are young, we are teens, another 50 years you will be able to celebrate. We are not likely to be part of another one. So we are enjoying this for all its worth. We will look forward to another one. We, we thank God, we have seen this 50. You know, if you don't see the other one, it not matter. If you pass this one, say, you don't matter at all. You know, you know, be here to see that I give a tap at this one. This is good for us. We enjoyed it. We thank God and we thank you. A round of applause for everyone who has been part of this, who said it happened and who has enjoyed it. Thank you, God. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for this evening. A round of applause for our chairman of planning committee, Uncle Tai, will be here, please.
a big round of applause for him because he worked harder than every other member of this committee, and I can tell you that. So, <laughs> so as we invite Professor Akiwale to give us the closing prayers, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we thank you, Lord, for the gift of this parish, for the gift of our faith, for this joyful celebration of 50 years of our parish. We thank you for all that you have accomplished in and through this parish. And as we rejoice today, we pray that you continue to add to our joy, strengthen our faith, and make us the type of parish you want us to be. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. We fly to your protection, the Holy Mother of God. Despise not our prayers and our necessities, but deliver us from all dangers, whoever glorious and blessed Virgin Mary. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing, the peace, and the joy of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you all and remain with you forever. Amen. <laughs>